Hey guys, so we know hundreds of unusual and bold projects for roads, bridges, tunnels, and aqueducts. At one point, the transport artery under the English Channel caused a huge uproar. Now imagine a 32-mile tunnel, with 24 miles of it being on the ocean floor. But what's being built in Norway now looks just simply incredible. 696 miles of roads, some of which will be underwater. What technologies make building this new world wonder possible? And what made the Scandinavians spend $47 billion on this project? Beautiful frozen mountains and picturesque fjords made the Norwegian coast famous the world over. However, all this beauty seriously complicates life for local car drivers, since weather in Norway is unpredictable. Freezing wind, winding mountain roads, snow, and black ice significantly complicate transport inside the country. If you want to drive from Kristiansand to Trondheim, you will have to drive over almost 808 miles of dangerous roads, use seven ferries, and spend over 24 hours, since the average speed is no more than 25 miles per hour. Since Norwegians treat their nature and wonderful landscape as sacred, they decided to build an underwater road to protect that environment and avoid causing changes to the ecosystem. But the future transport system required research since no one has ever built anything like this before. So the Coastal Highway Route project is working with three large universities in the northern region, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, the Stavanger University, and the Technological University of Chalmers. About 50 doctors are working on solving various engineering issues for the project. Now, our world does have many transcontinental roads. However, the Norwegian project has drawn attention from all over because a large part of the road would run under the waters of the fjords. So in June 2017, a construction plan was confirmed during a presentation and included in the National Transport Plan. The route will run through six provinces and the cities Stavanger, Bergen, Olesen, and Molde. Thanks to this project, the travel time will be half as long, and the route will be 106 miles shorter. The time will be saved thanks to replacing ferries with bridges and tunnels, as well as modernizing some of the roads on land. 60% of Norwegian exports are brought to the western coast, so an effective and predictable transport system will be very good for the national economy. So the project includes studying the ecological aspects of the construction, use, and technical servicing, as well as methods to provide the electricity for lighting and charging for electric cars. Of course, you can't create such a tunnel simply since the fjord depths can reach 4,600 feet. That means you can't build a tunnel on the seafloor. So the Norwegians are developing their own technology of an underwater bridge on floating pipes. So the idea proposes creating two parallel tunnels that run in opposite directions, each having two lanes. The pipe will be placed sufficiently deep underwater to avoid water movement and decrease the main sea burden, but not so deep as to have to tackle high water pressure. Usually 65 to 165 feet is deep enough, and at that depth the pipes won't interfere with shipping routes. Project leadership confirms that it's the only possibility to run a road through the fjords without drilling into the rock. But the tunnel isn't exactly floating since the pipes are attached to the ocean floor using special braces. Also, the tunnel is supported by powerful pontoons floating on the surface at intervals of about every 1,050 feet. Now, experts say the concept of a floating tunnel is especially suitable for deep fjords surrounded by mountains, since those features complicate bridge building. Nils Erik Anders Renkvist, a professor at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, which is consulting on the project, said, For bridges that cross long distances, you need arches and supports in specific places that, in the Norwegian climate conditions, won't serve as long as you'd like. Underwater floating tunnels are another thing altogether. Now, if you do it absolutely right and counterbalance the construction's weight with the floating part, 
it could be used almost forever, so the reliability and safety of the tunnel will be critically important. There will be emergency crossing every 820 feet in the parallel pipes, and telephones and video cameras will be placed 1,640 feet from each other. During testing, engineers rammed a submarine into the pipes, carried out a series of large explosions in the pipes, and even simulated a situation where a sinking ship ran into one of the pipes on its final trip to the ocean floor. Now, the tunnel withstood all of those tests and received also a series of necessary tweaks. So, the Norwegians are being consulted by experts from all over the world on this and are looking at all possible emergency scenarios. But there's still always a chance something will go wrong. So, the tests continue. In December 2017, the first stage of construction began, an 18-and-a-half-mile-long tunnel that runs along the bottom of a fjord at 1,300 feet deep, making it the deepest in the world. Now, according to representatives of Norway's National Transport Network, if everything goes right, the whole 697-mile-long project will be ready for use by 2050. Norway will be the first, but probably not the last, country that will use underwater roads of this style, since Italy and China are also developing similar designs. As far as the old road goes, it will be left for those who aren't in a rush and want to enjoy the magnificent fjords and legendary Scandinavian mountains. Now, the government in the Faroe Islands, unlike their Norwegian colleagues, went the classical route, since the depth there let them run a tunnel along the seafloor. So it's pretty unique because it's made of three parts, joined into the world's first underwater traffic circle. According to the government, the new roundabout will help decrease time between the capital Torsvan and Runevik from 1 hour and 14 minutes to just 16 minutes. So the underwater tunnel was able to connect two islands in the archipelago. All the islands, besides one, have people on them, and travel between them is key to developing the country's economy. Construction of the tunnel began in 2017 and lasted about three years, and investments in the project totaled at $162 million. Opening the tunnel and roundabout was planned for early 2021. We do want to note that the lowest tunnel is at a depth of 613 feet, and the steepest incline at that level isn't over 5%. Now, before the tunnel is opened, a series of tests on safety and durability will be carried out. They treated both the safety and the design of the tunnel very seriously. The roundabout in the middle of the tunnel was decorated with a huge artistic installation that combines sculptures and light effects. The creator of the 262-foot work of art was famous Faroe artist Trondur Patterson. The government is also considering an additional influx of tourists. Notably, driving through the tunnel will have a toll. Owners of light cars will have to pay about 12 euro to go one way. Of course, huge projects like this aren't cheap for the taxpayers, and we'll all understand it's for the future ahead of us. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like, comment, let me know, would you drive through the uh, underwater tunnel? Or are you like me and, and uh, not quite sure if I want to do that yet? And I uh, will see you again next time.